Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Take a tail. Look at all those little eyes peering at us. Hi gang. These are the Echis Pyramidum babies. Uh, somebody in here is eating gecko tails. I'm not sure who. But if I leave them overnight, they disappear. You want that? Hmm? Are you scared of the camera? Well, that one's just saying, oh, the, the roof is open and I can get out. <laughs> hmm. All right, no one's going to be brave and take one, so I'm just going to leave them there. And you guys can... Perhaps eat them. Somebody's eating. We'll find out soon enough who's not. Mm. Okay, so now these are the other Echis babies from this year. And these these were the guys that were doing pretty well feeding on geckos and as you can see they were getting big enough so they would easily eat their brethren uh, so I moved the biggest ones into their own little tub to mature further not that I have any idea what I may do with them all still um, uh, so I still have to continue feeding them so hopefully uh, uh, they will continue eating some of them, actually, I think that biggest one is eating pinks, and I should have tried a pink on it first. Oh, we have a shedding. Okay, we have a shedding. We don't see any pointy ends sticking around. Voila, we have a echis with a, with a fresh skin. Here. Do you like that? Come on, don't you uncovered me. Don't get all butt hurt. <laughs> yeah. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove said shed skin. And uh, leave Mr. Gecko there, and hopefully it will eat it. They also might have been a part of the, the group that always scary when you don't see a snake and you open the cage <laughs> but I see a little tongue over yes, there I see, see so something at the I, end there I am just gonna run this gecko by and see if he eats it now like I was saying these guys could be and the smaller ones could be uh, uh, cricket feeders. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it in there. And I'm going to give our resident Insularis gecko feeder uh, the leftover one if it wants it. He ate uh, the other day, so you may not want it. You bit it, now eat it. All right, I'm just gonna leave that. It's camera shy like everything else. Oh, somebody shed up there. We'll have to get that out. Okay, so now I'm gonna put these back in there so not to get wet. I know Miss Tiger Keelback has been looking for something to eat. Oh, I'm afraid of the camera. You know, this is funny because she's always been uh, really ready to take food. 
and all of a sudden is not. There we go. That was a bit of a hesitation on her part. Normally, she, she's right up front, ready to go. Well, I moved the camera back a bit, and that seemed to calm her down. They really don't like the camera. No, they really don't. Okay, so now on to pogo sticks with venom. That's a very freshly shed jararaca from Brazil. Another variety of pogo stick with venom. This is the actual species that the beta blockers uh, were derived from, the venom of this snake. Um, these bite the snot out of a lot of Brazilian people. And what happened, they noticed people were bit, would pass out almost instantaneously because the venom uh, has a protein which is a vasodilator so if you make a tube bigger the pressure goes down and they basically fainted and fell over they're not dead but you know they uh, they need to get their blood pressure back up otherwise your heart and brain don't perfuse your kidneys don't perfuse and that will cause you trouble down the road so that's uh, Jerakusu uh, sorry Jeraraka one there is a snake called the Jaracusu. It's another one that I'd like to like to have, but uh, I don't. You want that? You want that? Okay. <laughs> in typical lance head fashion, you know, you can see it in every single one of them. You know how the Bothrops asper behaves. It sort of arches its back over the ground, stares the prey right in the face, and chomp. No fear. Okay. And now over here to Pogo's baby, the one that's eating, the one that isn't eating got fed last night. She's a real chow hound. You want that, huh? Oh, you do. How sweet is that? She's uh, sort of darker than her mother, but lighter than her father. Okay, we're not going down any sort of racial overtones <laughs> here. Um, that's just the way it is. Yes, I will uh, move in to some elapids. That is a newbie uh, at the lair. And that is, of course, trying to bite my ear, a little coracobra. Do you want that? Oh, you do. That's very nice. Isn't she pretty? That stopped her in her tracks. Beautiful uh, South African specimen uh, uh, bred in captivity and hopefully my male will, uh, will last long enough to uh, breed with her. Right now, if I wouldn't dare put her in there because she would be eaten, wouldn't you? Right? Oh, yes. Oh, that's tasty, huh? And you're using gravity to your advantage. How nice. Would you like another? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Well, come on up here. You came up and over, almost grabbed my earlobe while I was bending over. Huh? Getting a little nosy. Huh? Oh, I got something to eat, so I'm gonna get out of here now. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I handed it to you correctly. There you go. There you go.
Oh, she eats like a real champ. Yeah. Look at that. The um, uh, their venom isn't really neurotoxic, although in small children it can be a bother. But I'll tell you, it has quite a cytotoxic effect. Uh, I know from experience I got bit on my index finger and it looked like E.T.'s finger uh, after a few hours. It was all uh, very swollen and very painful, uh, but nothing worse than that. Uh, not that I would really want to invite another bite from one. Um, it's just giving you an idea of the different level of toxicities. If you had to take a bite from one of the snakes here, that would be the snake to take the bite from. <laughs> uh, no antivenin for them. You just treat things symptomatically. And in, uh, in that case, um, you know, I just took uh, some, some Advil and... Uh, uh, just tried to keep the pressure off of it. Was that tasty? Do you have a full gullet now? Huh? Are you a happy camper? Yeah, I mean, we can we can play with her. The Bothrops babies, we really can't play with because they're, you never know what sort of uh, tricks they're going to be up to since they're all pogo babies. Hi, are you done? I think that's enough for right now. Because uh, the weekend's almost here. What? No, no, no. You can't eat that. Oh, we're excited. Oh, we're trying to eat it. Are you watching the videos of uh, Elvis in action? Do you want another, huh? You want another? I'll get you another. You just stay there. Don't go off and bother anybody. Here you go. Here you go. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Oh, <laughs> what happened? I'm, oh, I'm going to bite anything I can right now because I want my mouse. All right, so you're going to have to take your chances with the shake and bake and because uh, I'm going to shut this before you decide to go cruising again. <laughs> this guy is generally always ready for food. He's <laughs> one of the om nom guys. There you go. This is one of the uh, squamagers that was born almost two years ago at Christmas, near Christmas time. And Mrs. Viper Keeper got them all feeding. And these are the last two that I have from that group. Um, uh, these are unrelated males, not that I could breed them, but. Uh, his, I don't think his mother's in there, so technically I could breed him against the female I do have and the female that's up there, but I'm trying to get those two to breed because they're very attractive couple. He's beautiful. He's almost patternless and a nice uh, yellow uh, orange. That's why they're called variable bush vipers because, you know, out of one, one brood, you can get your basic green, you can get blue, black, red, yellow, uh, anything in between pastels. So uh, they're a fun snake to keep. They're closely related to Serastes and Echis, so you do not want to get bit by them. Even small squamagers can cause a very serious coagulopathy. Your blood chemistry goes to hell and uh, there's not a whole lot they can do about it um, except give you supportive therapy. Now this guy you can barely see because he really uh, really blends in. This is the Milos Viper. He's related to the weasel and you can see he's learning how to wheeze already. Oh, a strike and release. Okay. Well, at least it's not a strike and mangle like the weasel. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave you with that and see how you do. Oh, here's a hungry face. You want that? You do. These are ringed water cobras. Naya annulata which have a very potent, strongly neurotoxic, almost no cytotoxins at all. 
uh, venom. Uh, they're found throughout uh, the swampy regions in the middle of Africa and they make their lives eating fish, uh, frogs, birds. Um, I know in captivity the there's so many of them just will not turn anything down if you give it to them. Chow hounds? Yes, they can be chow hounds. <clears throat> so each one is a different kind of housekeeper. This one keeps its house dry and doesn't get all the, the water out. You want that? This one also is very shy and very cranky. It's a female, that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first one I've seen with a hood. She was actually hooded when you opened that. Oh no, it's got it's got lizard on it. I don't want one that's got lizard on <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, they're so finicky. They're absolutely finicky. You think that they would be happy to get what was offered, but no. Oh, hello. Oh. Here, you want that? Yeah, the, these guys are, they're still at the age. They're not like the big guys that, you know, don't think that uh, you would possibly could hurt them. Um, hello. Nice to see you. This will bring over here. This is uh, Viper uh, Kazak, uh, sorry, Kaznakovi. It's one of the... Always trying desperately to hide. One of the miniature vipers uh, from the eastern mountains in Russia and, you know, put on a nice threat display. Come on. Hasn't eaten for me yet. So hopefully I can hear it. Yeah, he's huffing and puffing. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the venom, but I imagine it's quite like most other uh, viperous species. Uh, cytotoxins, hemorrhagins, probably a few neurotoxins. I'm going to leave that in there and let you settle down since you're all uh, all wigged out. Yeah, I worked up and scared so. Poor little guy. He's a cutie. <laughs> yeah, with lovely colors. Well, we now rejoin our program already in progress. Uh, Miss Green uh, has been uncomfortable in her larger cage. She doesn't feel secure and she's been very defensive and rattling like crazy. And I've had Miss Green since she was this big and as big around as my pinky. And for her to behave like this, it means that she's not comfortable. You know, she was in that cage. I moved her over there uh, to give her a little bit more space because she's a good four or five foot rattlesnake now. Um, so today at the Hamburg show, I picked up a nice piece of cork bark for a hide for her, hoping that uh, she'll appreciate it and, uh, you know, climb in and be more comfortable. So we have to position this without getting bit, without getting her to scoot out of the cage into my face. So, there we have it. That should allow her to uh, hide out of the hot spot. She has no problem sunning herself uh, under the lamp, which is really good, but she, uh, she is not uh, so happy when you come in the room. Meanwhile, frickin' nosy there <laughs> is wondering what the hell is going on. Uh, he has lifted his head and 
is like, is, is life served? So, uh, I have to get the glass back on the cage because there's no way in hell that that chunk of cork was going in there uh, with her. I really like these vision cages with these knockouts here because it allows you to uh, maneuver the glass uh, uh, safely uh, without exposing yourself too much to a possibility of a bite. So we'll leave her in there uh, on her own for a little while, let her explore her, uh, her little cork uh, home. And maybe we won't hear a thump in the night like we have been trying to climb out and over the ledges here. <laughs> she can also sit up there in the darkness if she decides to do that. Oh, he's butt hurt now. He's oh, <laughs> go. There was nothing for him to eat, so he retreated to his hide. Oh, wait, wait. They're there back. There might be something. There might be something. <laughs> They're back. <laughs> Hi, bud. <laughs> you so funny. You know, people just don't understand uh, that these animals all have personalities, and uh, uh, you know, it's fun to watch. That's that's half the fun of keeping them is is understanding the different personalities that present themselves, and that's why you know I can say this is very uh, a very uncharacteristic behavior for Miss Green. Yes. Uh, because, you know, she never rattled when we came in the room, always struck and held. Now she's striking and releasing, which means that she doesn't trust me enough to uh, keep her fangs out of action. So we're going to stop here. I've got some other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Puff Adder is certainly interested in food and and yes, that's, that's what's pretty much up for the day.